Tropical Depression 9 is organizing, and the latest track takes it over western Cuba and right to Florida, potentially as a major hurricane. We're here in your hurricane headquarters to keep you weather aware with the latest models and a live Q&A coming your way on track in the tropics. Hey there, folks. JB here with you alongside meteorologist Rebecca Barry. We want to get to your questions and comments, and we will do so in just a moment. Of course, using hashtag HeyRebecca, hashtag HeyJB in the Facebook Live comment section, as well as hashtag hey Jeff for Chief Meteorologist Jeff Beardelli with the latest models that have been coming in over the last couple of hours, Jeff, and we're hyper-focused on Tropical Depression 9. As we should be, because this is going to impact Florida. The real question is, where in Florida is it going to impact? And as we get new information, now that the system is actually formed, it's an actual tropical depression, the computer models are getting a better handle, and I can tell you the computer models are coming into better agreement on approximately where this is going to go. But if you remember Hurricane Charlie from many years ago, it was a very small storm, right? So the, the only people that felt the full fury, and it was a furious storm, uh, but the only people that felt the full fury were within, the, within about a 20 or 30 mile radius of the center, even less. And so outside of it, it, it didn't really have much of an impact at all in certain areas. So it really goes to show you that the devil is definitely in the details. So we're going to talk about the details right now. First, the wide view of the Atlantic, and it has really... Uh, turned on, as you can see. I'll step out of the picture so you can see it. There's TD9, the one we're most concerned about, which is soon to become a tropical storm over the next 24 hours. We don't know if it's going to be Hermine or Ian, uh, simply because there's another TD in the eastern Atlantic, which could take the name first. That's TD10. In the middle, 99L, not worried about that. Fiona headed to Canada as the strongest storm to ever hit Canada, believe it or not. And then there's Gaston, which is a tropical storm in the northern Atlantic Ocean. All right, so let's focus on TD9. And as you can see, uh, we, we do have a lot of thunderstorms, and you might think to yourself, well, this is really looking healthy right now. But then you look at the visible satellite, and it is naked. And what I mean by naked is the center of low pressure right there at the surface, and all the thunderstorms skewed to the western side. Still a lot of wind shear on top of the storm and to the east of the storm. So it's going to take a little while for this to become a tropical storm because it needs to gather thunderstorms around the center to energize and get stronger, and right now it is not. So here is a look at why. Take a look at that wind shear on the northern end. This is Fiona, which, crazy as it may seem, the storm way in the North Atlantic now, because it's so strong, is impacting the system all the way in the southern Caribbean. But, of course, this system is sliding to the west. As it continues to, it will uh, no longer be influenced by Fiona. And the system will have a chance to really uh, regroup, uh, get stronger, because it'll be over very warm water and very low wind shear. The latest stats, 35-mile-an-hour winds moving west-northwest at 14 miles an hour. That is the official forecast track over the next couple of days. And notice, once it gets uh, around Jamaica, it starts to energize. Why? Water temperature is incredibly warm here in the northwest Caribbean. So that by Monday at 8 a.m., it is likely at that point transitioning to hurricane status. Now, it is going to move over Cuba, probably. And if it does, it may lose just a teeny bit of steam. But notice Cuba is very, very narrow where it's going to be moving over. It's probably not going to lose much of its energy. Then it moves into Florida Bay in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, where water temperatures are, again, extremely warm. It'll have all this territory, depending upon how short a distance it is before it makes landfall, to strengthen again. And right now, we are in the middle of the cone here in the Tampa Bay area, down through southwest Florida especially. So the real center of the cone right now, at least, is around Fort Myers. But we always tell you not to concentrate on the center, concentrate on the whole cone because things will change. Remember, this is still five days out. A lot of time for this to be tweaked west or further east. But notice it is forecast to be a major hurricane, Cat 3 possibly making landfall sometime Wednesday morning on the west coast of Florida. However, with all that said, could be as far south as the Keys or Miami. And you should know that as the system begins to move across Cuba and right into the Florida Straits and Florida Bay, at ahead of it, we'll already be experiencing some of these tropical storm force winds in the southern half of Florida. So that could start happening as much as 24 to 36 plus hours ahead of the storm, just so you know that. That is the full track right there. So the real critical factor is where does this system turn as it moves uh, to the northwest? Does it turn early and head through south Florida? Does it turn late and head into the central Gulf and then eventually into the west coast of Florida? Well, so the only question is that. It's not, will it make a turn? Because it is going to make a turn, and that's because you notice this wind, the steering flow in the upper atmosphere is has a westerly component, so we do think it will uh, turn. Let's show you these spaghetti plots. Everybody's always interested in these, and this goes, this really tells a story. It doesn't only tell us where each model is going. It tells us whether there's consensus. 
That is a lot of consensus five days out. So a lot of the models, at least right now, this particular group of models this morning, showing a track somewhere through southwest Florida up to around the Tampa Bay area. There are a couple of outliers here in the Gulf. There are a few at least. Uh, you don't see them here, but the um, American model, the 12Z American model is out here, and so is the Canadian model too. But nevertheless, um, you could see that there's more consensus. So we're getting more certain that a hurricane and possibly a strong hurricane will impact Florida directly as we head into the early and middle part of, of next week. All right, having a problem with the clicker here. Amanda, can you press, let's see here. Someone can press the forward button on this. For some reason, the clicker just quit on me. And you know, what I'll do is I'm just gonna toss it back to JB and Rebecca for now. And then we are gonna have, we're gonna field some questions and I'll show you whatever other graphics we have in a couple seconds. Yeah, Jeff, okay. uh, stand by because we're really gonna wanna see the GFS and the Euro model for yep. our Track in the Tropics yep. fans out there. They know that uh, comparing those two models so integral to what we do as far as determining where a storm might go. And if we can get the I, graphics. You know what, so, so I, it's working now. I, it, the computer logged itself out. <laughs> Right? Is that what happened? Yeah, that's what happened. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Amanda's here as well. Amanda Holly is here as well. Um, so, so I believe, ah, so I want to show you this too. So this is ocean heat content. So you can see how, how it moves over some of the warmest water uh, that there is. Let's put it that way. All right. So this is the one that we've been waiting for, JB. Uh, so let's show you this. So you can see where the GFS model is and where the European model is. And I believe this is probably still the European model from last night, although I've just seen the newest European model, and I'll update you on that too. But let's show you uh, the tracks of these two. And you can see the European model further east than the GFS model by a long shot. So there is that envelope, that window could be as far west as 100 or 200 miles west of Tampa at this point, and it could be as far southeast as the Keys in Miami. Uh, what I will say uh, to JB and Rebecca and everybody in the audience is I've seen the new European model, and it no longer is through the central Keys where it was. Now it's through Naples which, by the way, is in line with a lot of the spaghetti plots that I showed you, right? There was this concentration of spaghetti plots in southwest Florida. So it's through the southwest part of Florida as well. So there's a lot of agreement right now. But the question really is, is, you know, is that agreement, is that truly a trend that this agreement is going to, is, is going to be consistent? Or, or, or are we going to continue to see swings? And we generally see swings. Five days out, Usually the track is not set in stone. It would be somewhat miraculous if it was at this point. But and let's let's make this clear for our audience: the GFS, the American model, the Euro, the European model, of course. And so we use this these two models. It's so important to compare uh, two of the more mainstream models when it comes to forecasting hurricanes and tropical development. Let's get right into our meteorologist Q and A. For those of you who have been with us here before, you know how this works. For newcomers, let me explain really quickly. You see the hashtags all around your screen: hashtag Hey Jeff, hashtag Hey Rebecca, hashtag Hey JB. If you use one of those hashtags. In our Facebook Live comment section, we can animate your comments on screen, and we'll do so. We'll start with a comment from Ali Hicks. Again, you're tracking the Tropics Q&A powered by Handyman Roofing. Hashtag, hey, Rebecca, how terrible would this be? My daughter, absolutely terrified, and to be honest, I am too. It, it's a good time to be prepared, but of course panic, right, Rebecca? Yes, it's far too early to be terrified, I promise. Uh, we could see, we were just talking about the different scenarios because that huge wide cone is for the center of the storm. And so the center of the storm could be in Miami, which would mean it would be a little breezy and maybe a little cloudy for us on Wednesday, not a big deal at all. Of course, if the center of the storm were to move closer to us, the higher our impacts would be. And so depending on how close we were to the storm is when we could see the heaviest of the, the rain impacts and the wind impacts as well and so it's far too soon to tell but the areas that see the worst of the damage will be rather concentrated wherever they end up along the coast and so the most of us need to get prepared over the weekend but no one needs to be panicking or worrying over the weekend it's just too soon to tell where the worst of the impacts will end up again this storm not yet named not hermine or ian just yet still tropical depression nine but we are monitoring the national hurricane center's advisories for the very latest on whether or not it's going to be a named storm probably what by the end of today a name I, maybe tomorrow i mean it's, it's like i said it was naked the storm is naked meaning there's no thunderstorms around its center it's gonna take a while to build those thunderstorms it's probably gonna be tomorrow let's get to the this one from Tisha Gregg in our Facebook Live comment section, hashtag hey Jeff. Will this be a rainmaker or wind? Well, it's going to be both somewhere, right? I mean, we don't know exactly yet where the storm's going to go. And the devil truly is in the details because the eventual forecast track will dictate exactly 
um, where the worst impacts are. And remember, and I said this before, not to say this is going to be the same as Hurricane Charlie, although I will say it's interesting because this is the exact track that Hurricane Charlie took, but I will tell you that no two hurricanes are alike. This track is gonna change number one, and number two, every system produces different impacts. But with Hurricane Charlie, it was a very, very, very tight core. The winds were prolific inside of the core. If you were within a 30 mile diameter or so, you got blasted by Charlie. If you were outside of that, you, you, you felt very mild effects. That, that's not to say that this storm is going to be like that. It could be completely different. It could have a bigger wind field, it likely will. Um, but where it goes will dictate where the rain is. If, we, if the storm goes through South Florida and Miami, we would barely get a drop of rain here in the Tampa Bay area. If the storm goes 100 miles west of us in the Gulf of Mexico, we would see a lot more rain and a lot more tornadoes. We'd be on the eastern side of the system. So you can see that the devil is in the details. Let's get to this comment for Rebecca from Caitlin. Again, use a hashtag in our comment section. And of course, we will animate them on screen as most as, as quickly as we can. We'll get to as many comments as possible. Hashtag hey, Rebecca, couldn't it still turn? And this is all, everything here is revolving mm -hmm. around this inevitable turn it, can we say it's inevitable all storms turn at some point uh, they they all make that general comma shape as they move across the atlantic and then make that turn to the north and so the difference here is we're watching that front and the steering flow that jeff pointed out that will and how fast the storm starts to interact with that steering flow is what will determine the turn and so it could still turn the forecast cone includes a turn if it if it were to take the southernmost track of that cone and the center was over miami that would essentially be a turn away from us we wouldn't get that much and so it if you look at the forecast cone this far out it could the eye could miss south florida and make its way into the bahamas according to this forecast cone and so it's just too soon to tell exactly what we can expect and but the answer to the question is it absolutely could still turn my personal rule of thumb and i don't know how much scientific basis this has but i like two good model runs once the center has been established well mm -hmm. I, I like the second model run after the the center is really defined we're getting a ton of questions okay a, a lot we're gonna have to try to go as rapid fire as we can sure. here through these comments we'll be less we have... verbose jb i have a problem with words i, I say <laughs> lots of them We'll try to I'll get try to, to as efficient. many of your comments. It's my job to get to the comments. It's their job, folks, to, of course, answer those questions. Uh, let's get to this one. And I, I love this question. This is always a big question, talking about the GFS versus the Euro. And with the million dollar or billion dollar question, hashtag hey, Rebecca, which model is usually more accurate? So it goes back and forth and back and forth. And the Euro really had a nice decade for a while. And then they updated the GFS. And so that for the past two or three seasons, the GFS has outperformed the Euro in accuracy, but it is by marginal dimensions. Let's get to this one really quickly. I'll answer this one. I can take this one. Hashtag KJB, will it stay a tropical storm? When would it possibly hit us? Well, first, it's not a tropical storm yet. That's the next category that it would be elevated to by the NHC. And then what could it possibly hit us? We're talking about uh, middle of next week. Let's go to Taylor's comment. Hashtag KJB hey, looking into travel plans. Is this going to um, ma majorly uh, affect the keys? And the keys are, we got to talk about the keys for a second. I think so. Yeah, I think there's a good chance. I would say if your plan is to go to the keys over this weekend or early next week, it may you may want to rethink your plans. Um, guys, I'm loading in a couple of more. Sure. Uh, you want me to keep talking? Yes, yeah, okay. for a second. For a second. <laughs> want me to distract? I'm going to distract and delay. No, but in all seriousness, um, like I said, you know, the models seem to be coming to a consensus here. Uh, Rebecca, I'll ask your opinion on this. Do we think that they're onto something, or do we think that the next model run, the Zero Z, so that tonight's runs, will kind of shift it again? I think it'll get shifted again. I think even though they've identified where they think the center is with Hurricane Hunter aircraft, the thunderstorms are not around the center. So uh, It's true. But, uh, I mean, I, I, I stutter to, to, to look at the agreement five days out in that. I mean, yeah. that is pretty incredible. But that's also a function of the fact that there's strong synoptic steering. When I say synoptic steering, middle latitude winds are out of the west. So they're all, seeing the, they're all seeing the same thing. They're going to be affected and turned. It is going to turn. The question is, where does it turn? Let's get to the next question. It comes in from, let's go to Courtney. Uh, Courtney in our comment section, Courtney Estrada. Hashtag, hey, Jeff, any predictions on the strength of this storm? What category are your collective minds thinking? And let me point out that, of course, the National Hurricane Center has it as a category three major hurricane yep. at landfall. I don't disagree with them necessarily on that. I think there's a, a good chance of that. Uh, I would be surprised if it were much weaker. Not to, It's conceivable, by the way, that it could strengthen to a cat three or four and then weaken a teeny bit before it comes on land if it goes further north, if it goes further north. 
So, uh, but I have no reason to disagree with him. I think I think Cat Three is probably where it ends. Uh, if it has any more time, though, over the Gulf, literally another few hours, it would probably eventually jump to four. Um, you know, so so we'll see what happens. Rebecca Tammy's asking if we're putting up shutters, should we do it over the weekend due to rain on on Monday? Uh, if we're talking about people taking preparations for their homes, mm-hmm. what's what's the time to do it? I'll, um, if I have to put up my shutters, which is a big if, um, and yours as well, I would probably do that Monday, mainly because living with your shutters up is pretty miserable. Mm-hmm. It's so dark inside the house, and you have plenty of time on Monday. The exception would be if you need help with that, and you have no availability for help over Monday. Uh, if, if you needed to get that done uh, Sunday, because that's when you, the only time that you had someone to help you with that, that would be the only exception. But I would wait until late on Sunday because it may not be an issue, and I don't want you to have to do extra work over the weekend, especially one as beautiful as this one, uh, if you don't need to. Uh, we got folks joining us from other Facebook pages, really across the southeastern United States. I want to just hop, hop into one comment. I'm sure they're very relieved right now in Louisiana seeing this current track. Uh, hashtag hey Jeff from Amanda from KLFY's Facebook page. Uh, what changed that made it turn away from Louisiana? What's the short answer to the this? The short answer is just these, these, this jet stream, this westerly steering flow. A couple days ago, the models were at odds with each other about if that jet stream that you see over, over the Great Lakes would remain steadfast and stubborn. Now the models agree it will remain said steadfast and stubborn and therefore not allow that steering flow, that westerly steering flow across the Gulf to retreat. So at some point, this system will feel that westerly steering flow. And number one, it may get sheared. And number two, it's likely to turn to the east at some point. Where, though, that's the big question. We don't know for sure. We've got about another six or seven minutes to answer your questions live, folks, on Track in the Tropics. This is the last call for your hashtag, hey, Jeff, hashtag, hey, Rebecca, or hashtag, hey, JB. Uh, questions and comments in the Facebook Live comment section. We are getting inundated with comments. We'll try to get to as many of them as possible. But a lot of them right now are... If we hit the touch screen here, we go to Kendall. Hashtag, hey, Jeff, what is the timeline? When are we expecting landfall? A lot of questions about timeline, including also from Colleen from the WFA Facebook page. Hashtag, hey, Jeff, does it look to be a timeline to Tampa Bay area more Wednesday or or Thursday, you guys? Would probably be Wednesday, but remember that we're going to see impacts at least 36 hours ahead of the storm itself. So, you know, we could be under a hurricane warning if it comes in this direction as early as Monday, sometime Monday. Which, which means that we would be we would expect to see um, impacts you know at least 24 hours before the actual center of the storm arrives. So just because the storm's coming on Wednesday and that's when it that's when it's supposed to make landfall. And by the way, that, that could change drastically if the storm goes to Naples or Cape Sable, which is extreme South Florida, it would be 18, 24 hours before that. You know. Let's get to this one from Stephanie Stokes from the WMBB Facebook page, and that's Panama City Beach. Hashtag Hey Jeff, think it's gonna shift west since it's taking longer to really develop weaker goes goes west and i'll bring you guys both up here yeah for this one because i know that's a tough question so i'm going to toss it over to rebecca (laughs) west versus east is a big deal here and so west versus east is a big deal and uh weaker storms do typically drift west stronger storms make the turn north faster and further but what the wild card is in this forecast is the fact that we've got those strong steering currents and that first cool front of the season that's pushing through and so it's looking less and less likely something would have to change it would have to slow down drastically and we would have to see a the set up across the Gulf change for it to make a more westerly turn. Is there any way that we can bring up, I want to point out something to our audience, and maybe you guys can provide some insight on this. Is there any way to show Cuba on, on our graphics at the moment or yeah, to go back? Yeah, we're going to show it right now. No, no, we, oh. Amanda's got it. Magic. Uh, yeah, Amanda. Thank you. She's, Amanda's on the controls. Thanks, so Amanda. Here we're, here we're looking at Cuba, right? So Tropical Development 101 is the more land interaction yeah. there is, the more it breaks up the storm, the more that the storm is over water, the worse it is because it has time to strengthen, right? The more west it goes, the less land interaction right. technically there is That's because true. Cuba is just, there's just more land mass there to the east, correct? So mm-hmm. east could mean more land interaction and weaker, but west could be, and west, if it goes even west of Cuba, if it hooks around Cuba, then it gets... Further west it goes, the stronger it gets. That's, that's as simple but the as one that. thing, the one caveat to that is once it gets to the central Gulf, it's going to feel that westerly steering flow, which is also wind shear, by the way. So the models show that if it goes that far north, and some do show that, it does weaken. It ingests dry air, and it also has some wind shear. So the sweet spot is if it, if it comes on shore somewhere south of Tampa Bay, you know, it, it, will have, it will be making that turn, but not really feeling the shear to the extent that it would weaken very much. That's where it would be potentially the strongest, strongest potential. Let's go over to Alabama real quick. Kimberly with a great question. Hashtag JB. Any chance of the jet stream moving down uh, sooner? 
Well, they asked you, JB. Why don't you ask No, me? absolutely <laughs> not. That one's completely on you guys. Uh, moving down sooner. Well, it's on its way already. I mean, we're getting a cold front today in the Tampa Bay area, so we're going to see scattered showers and storms. You know, most of the time we are clapping and applauding when the first cold front comes. The problem with that is that it also comes with this, which is this westerly steering flow, and this is the time when the seasons meet. I did a, uh, a segment on air yesterday about the amount of uh, direct hits from the Gulf of Mexico that we've seen during the summer versus October. So in August, we've seen only two since 1950, and in October, we've seen 10. Let's get to so it. goes to show you the change in steering currents. This one, I mean, this we could probably spend the whole episode talking about this. We kind of have. Holly Amber from WFLA's Facebook page. Is it definitely landing as a hurricane in the Tampa Bay area, Jeff and Rebecca? No. No, it's not definite at all. Um, it's possibility, and that's where the center of the track is right now, but it's certainly not a definite at this point. There's a lot of factors that could change. I also just want to say, because we, we, we do have to leave now, um, that we, we are not worried. I'm not worried, and so you shouldn't be worried, and I think Rebecca would agree as well. The bottom line is just making sure you're prepared now. Take stuff off your list. Just start going through your list. You have to go through the hurricane safety kit. You have to talk to your family about the potential for whatever you decide you want to do. You want to guess up the car. Just... Just check stuff off the list. It'll make you feel a lot better. So then in the last minute, if we do need to take some big actions here, you're ready, you're confident, and you're not worried and not stressed and, and not rushed at the end. But but we are not worried. I know we've got a lot to get to. Let me yeah. sneak in these last two questions because I have them loaded up in the queue. Uh, Caroline from WFLA's Facebook page. Uh, let's just talk about flights in general. When could we start to see flight impacts with our local airports in the Tampa Bay area and really just in Florida in general? I think the Tampa airport could be impacted as early as late Tuesday into Wednesday by outer bands. I don't think it's a permanent closure at that point I th or a day long closure. I do think that by the time uh, Wednesday rolls around, if the track holds true and it takes the center, we would have a Wednesday closure in Tampa as well as Orlando. And our last question, because our meteorologists yeah. are being called in. We, we have to go. Uh, Raymond is asking, when are watches and warnings going to, when do we expect them to first go up? So the watches go out thir uh, 48 hours before hurricane uh, impacts might be felt. So that could be as early as Monday morning, probably. I think Rebecca would probably yeah, agree, agree if it's Tampa. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would be um, hurricane warnings would be Monday evening. All right, I'm going to stay here with our audience for another couple of minutes and just answer some of the more basic questions that I can. Again, not a meteorologist, folks, uh, just the guy pressing the buttons, uh, fielding those questions from our social media audience. Jeff and Rebecca, feel free to, um, I know that you guys have responsibilities now that the time has turned over to 3 o'clock. 